Hey everyone, Tanya from Shooting Star SVG back and today I'm going to show you all how to create a wavy text effect in Affinity Designer. So if this is your first time here, go ahead and click on like and subscribe below as that does keep me motivated to continue making these videos so that way you can grow your business and change your life. Um, you know, I created that tutorial in Inkscape about creating that retro wavy text effect. Everybody was like really appreciative of it and loved it. And they were like, how do we do this in Affinity Designer? And I was like, well, I have no idea. Well, Funny enough, I stumbled upon this fantastic tutorial on YouTube by Detour Shirts. I'm going to link his channel up above. Y'all should definitely go check him out and give him some love um, because I thought it was a fantastic tutorial. And I'm definitely going to emulate that and walk you guys through how to do that with my own technique and style. But his walkthrough is also really good. So definitely go check out his video again, which I'll post up above. He goes a, a little bit extra mile, right, to show you guys how to create flowers and things of that nature. Um, I just thought this would be a good thing to add to the Affinity Designer course that I'm currently working on. Um, so definitely go check him out. But yes, we're going to do some wavy text in Affinity. The process is painful compared to utilizing lattice deformation in Inkscape, but it's not impossible. And I'm sorry that I look like Hot Mess Express. We have an armadillo problem in our backyard. We're down in Georgia. It is tearing my garden up. So we're trying to locate where this little thing is going so we can maybe try to trap it. But at this point, I'm just getting really ticked off and it's muggy as all get out out there. I was sweating all day at work, walking around congressional aides, and I'm just ready to just be done. But I love you guys, so I wanted to make this video. Anyways, what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to my computer screen and we will get started. I'm in Affinity Designer and I have my artboard up. So I have some retro fonts on here, but I'm going to be using the keep on trucking font. So let me select my text here. I already have this selected. You can see it's kind of a, a groovy looking font. This is not a free for commercial use font on the font. So if you want this, you are going to have to go purchase it from the creator, or you just can't use it on commercial items like digital products or print on demand or anything like that. You want to make sure you're using a 100% free font. Um, and you can find those on the font. You can also find those on font bundles. So definitely go check that link out down below. There's a ton of really awesome free fonts for commercial use on font bundles, and I can't recommend them enough. Okay, with that being said, I'm using the keep on truck and font. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to type out. Okay, that is not in the font I wanted. <laughs> Let's go back here. Keep on trucking. And I want this in all caps. So stay. And I'm just going to duplicate this, drag it down, duplicate, duplicate. So stay, and you can do as many lines as you want. Stay wild, child. Okay. Stay wild, child. I'm going to delete this last one. And you can make this text as big or as small as you like. i got to hold the button down, hold down shift and drag out. I'm going to make this pretty big. And I'm just going to kind of center everything up. Now, with this kind of stuff, I usually like to keep everything concentric. So I'm going to keep the width of this text. It looks like it's about a 10. I have my aspect ratio locked. So I'm just going to bring these all down to a width of 10. Or up, in this case, for the other ones. And I'm just going to select all of them and go up to my alignment tool. Make sure everything's looking good. Now, in this case, you may want to uh, move some of the um, move some of the letters in. So, if you have your character panel open, you can do this. Um, it just depends. So, you just want to go ahead and see this um, kerning right here. You just want to bring this kerning in if you want to bring some of these letters closer. Now, this is going to throw your width off if it's not. Um, and everything else looks pretty good. If it's not, you know. Uh, if oh God, I can't talk tonight. If you've already made it that width, you're going to have to come back in and bring it out, but that's at least going to bring those together. So you want to adjust your kerning by selecting in between letters, um, and it's going to bring that in. Okay. Um, and you can also do that by just holding down Alt and then like the left button or uh, right arrow button if you're using a Mac. Okay. So anyways, um, off of that soapbox, the next thing that you're going to want to do, and I'm going to bring these just up slightly, 
is you're going to want to actually curve the text. So to do this, you're going to take your pen tool and you're just going to keep all these options the same. But basically, you're just going to go ahead and you're going to click and drag where you want these curves to be. And I just did a really bad job. I'm blaming it on the beers that I had with dinner. So let me adjust this. And you can easily adjust your curve just by moving these nodes around. No big deal. Okay. Actually going to delete that last guy out. And I can go ahead and delete this one. And you want to just adjust the lines here. Okay. So that's pretty good. So I'm just going to move this up slightly. Okay, that's not bad. Hit V as in Victor to select. I'm going to slightly drag this up just a little bit. And then I'm just going to duplicate it. And I'm going to drag this one down to where I would like the wild to go. All right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these both. And I'm going to duplicate. I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to drag down. Okay. I'm going to keep those even. And the next thing you're going to want to do is select all of your text and go to convert to curves. Okay. And then you're just going to go ahead and ungroup. All right. And that's going to make sure that all these letters are separated. And ungroup. And ungroup. And then you're going to take your letters and you're going to drag them up and down to the line if they are not meeting that line exactly, okay? And this is going to give us that curvy effect as we go through. And you're going to do the same thing with each letter. So you're going to drag it down. Um, this one I might drag up just a little bit. I'm going to drag this one down. And it's going to start to create that curved illusion, okay? Now this curve is a little bit sharp here on the top. So what I might do is leave it like this and then drag this one down and this one up. So it's really like subjective depending on what you're trying to achieve. And I'm just going to bring this down actually. And I'll just drag this guy up. I'm going to bring this down slightly. I'm going to bring this up. And I'm going to bring this down actually. I'm going to bring this down. So you can see if you have a lot of letters or things like that, it's going to be kind of a painful process because now once you start doing this, you're actually going to have to go back in and start node editing. And that's really where it gets kind of painful. So in this case, the S actually doesn't look too bad. Um, for you to get to where the nodes are, you would just have to do this. Now you can go ahead and like bring this S down further and kind of round this out a little bit if that's something that you want to do just by bringing this out. Um, but it just kind of makes it look weird. So for now, I'm just going to back out of that. I'm going to leave the S as is because it really doesn't look that bad. Um, it's really these bottom ones with the straight lines that are going to give you that good effect. And sometimes you really got to zoom in to get there because I always miss with my with my mouse. So you're just going to select those nodes and drop them down and then adjust the cursor as needed. Okay. And we'll do the same thing here. Gonna bring these down and adjust that out a little bit. Bring this in, and like I said, it can be a little bit of a painful process. But once you're done, it's like, oh wow, why haven't I been doing this all my life? Okay, drag that out, and then maybe just kind of bubble this out a little bit more. Oopsies, didn't mean to hit that line. So you can see, like I said, it's a bit painful. Okay. And then maybe just drag this down and bubble that out a little bit. Just kind of going around that line. And then again, you're going to bring this one here and this one here and adjust these arm nodes. So as I scroll out, you can see that it's kind of taking this interesting shape. So this S does kind of look a little bit out of place since all of these are kind of going along with the curves. Now, I could have brought these curves closer together. I probably should have. But in retrospect, you know, it's, it is what it is. I'm going to finish this up. 
you know, the only different thing for like the W is that you definitely want to make sure that um, you are adjusting the top and the bottom for the W. Um, and also for the I and, the, and everything in wild, you're going to have to do the top and the bottom. So it's a little bit painful to do both, but definitely worth it. Um, it's just one of those things that you're just going to have to sit and play around with. Okay. So I'm going to go through and do that for all these and then I will come back. And one thing I wanted to note before I kept going, so like for this L, for example, I'm selecting all these nodes on the side. I'm holding down shift and I'm dragging down until this top letter gets where it needs to be because I want to keep that same kind of symmetry. So again, you can double click on this and obviously I have to fix this little thing, but you can select multiple nodes by just coming in and selecting them and you'll see them highlight in blue and you can move them all at the same time by holding down shift or just moving in general. Okay. And that's going to move where you want them to go. Okay, so you can kind of see how this is curving now. The next thing that you would want to do is go in and actually delete these line nodes so you can actually see what this is looking like. Uh, you can see I have a definite good amount of node work to do, and I apologize. I did this really quickly. Again, the more letters you have, the more complicated it's going to be, but it does create that effect based off of what you're trying to do. And you can really do this for anything um, that you wish. Um, it just depends on kind of what look you're going for. Unfortunately, if any designer doesn't really have a good technique for performing this, aside from drawing some guidelines, utilizing the pen tool and kind of conforming the shapes to what you're looking to do. But I mean, it does look pretty funky to me. Um, you know, you could easily come in here and just recolor everything. Um, let me get it back onto the move tool so it's not so funky and just color these things in different colors so that it just looks a little bit different. Um, and you can see my node work definitely needs work. So you'd want to go in and like fine tune these things after you delete the um, nodes. I mean, you can also double click and try to just go up to smooth curve and see if that helps you. I mean, this doesn't really help me down here because you can see these like little lumps. You can even come in and like delete nodes to see if maybe that will help smooth some of these things out because with these, you know, you don't necessarily need a ton of nodes. So like in this particular one, this is really just a bump. So if I just delete this, it actually kind of looks a little bit better. Probably not the most perfect thing in the world. Maybe I would delete one more, but that's probably going to give it more of an angle shape, which I don't really want. So it's definitely something that you would have to um, play around with to make sure that you get these weird jaggedy lines um, situated. Now, if this was just a print on demand product that you're creating, it wouldn't be a huge deal because... Um, people aren't physically cutting this out with their software, but the more nodes that you have on something, the harder it is for somebody to cut it out on their software. So really the moral of the story is create your guidelines, okay? And then conform your letters to the guidelines by resizing them after you convert them to curves and then messing with the nodes on the bottom or the top of the letters, depending on what guide you're working with and continue to work out from there. So again, it's kind of, a pain in the butt. It took me about probably 10, 15 minutes to go through and do this one really quickly and really crappily, but it is doable. So I just wanted to show you guys that again, I can't thank Detour Shirts enough for providing this original tutorial. His is way better than mine, y'all. So definitely go check his out for sure. Uh, make sure you subscribe to his channel. He has a lot of really great stuff on there. And hey, if you got something out of my video, please go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button down below as that does keep me motivated to continue making these videos so that way you can grow your business and change your life. If you need anything at all, don't hesitate to reach out. Shooting Star SVG, signing out.